So after watching people watch my Penn & Teller video and give their reactions, I thought I'd finally watch it myself and give you some of the real background information on what was going through my head during this process and during the whole recording. So I hope you enjoy it. So, you know, I spent more time preparing for this introduction, or just as much time as I did in the actual performance. Because I knew that this would be the only thing that I could actually control. I could actually, you know, I knew what I was going to say and what I was going to do. And whereas I didn't know what Penn and Teller were going to say and how they are going to react, this I was in control of. So this is something that I really uh, prepared, I scripted, I made sure that I knew what I was going to say. And it made a very positive difference for my business because people learned about how I present business for how I talk at business conference. So at this point I'm standing backstage and I don't know what he's going to say when he introduces me. And then I hear this. And so I have to roll my eyes and like walk out two seconds later. Even though I heard that comment and was like, ugh, thanks for making that sound negative. So this opening sense is something that I practiced literally for a month, just on its own, this opening sequence, not cards, not anything. It was so critical for me to be able to just say it and deliver it um, without any fear. And when they used that part in their first commercial for the show, that validated those months of practice just on that alone. In a moment, you're going to help me shuffle these cards. Now, I found that how people shuffle cards... So, at, at this moment, I see Teller go, Whoop, and he follows me as I put the cards away, and I realize this is going to be much harder than I originally thought. Like, they're burning my hands. Again, at this point, I'm still... I don't think I'm going to fool him at this point. I don't know. But I, I'm trying to, to judge. Now, there's something that happened here. There's something that happened to you that only if you're a magician will you really understand why this is important. But the way I handed the cards to Penn and the way I handed the cards to Teller were very different. And I did it on purpose because I wanted them to think that the cards were special. So I handed the cards to Teller, no problem. When I give them to Penn, I kind of hesitate. He reaches out for them, which surprised me. I didn't think he was going to grab for them. But I wasn't going to give it to him. I was going to just put the cards down on the table. But this even added to the conviction of, oh, no, I don't want you to handle these cards. I'm just going to put these on the table. So right away, they are thinking that that half of those cards is a special deck of cards, which is what I wanted them to think. Um, it's not a red herring, but it is a thought. Now, I'm going to uh, kill that thought in just a few seconds. But at this moment in time, they are now convinced that I'm using the same exact method for this trick that they performed themselves in the Today Show and they had done in the past. All those cards. So we're going to square all of these cards up. And uh, you feel those are pretty well shuffled for yourself as well? Thank you, Teller. I'm going to spread these face up. And then I'm going to do a kind of a, a crazy shuffle, okay? I'm going to turn these face down. And I'm going to shuffle them together. So this is standard so far. Everybody knows what this is. This is standard triumph effect, shuffling cards face up at the face down. All right, very well mixed up. And then tell her if you would take your hand and place it like this for me, if you would. At this point, you still think yeah. that it's a probably a gimmick deck of cards. And press the cards together. That way, you not only see them, and all the way down the line, you actually feel them being shuffled. And all the way, all the way, working. And this was so kind of like a little awkward, because this didn't happen perfectly at first. So again, in my head, I'm trying to think, how is it going to play out? Then Penn makes the joke. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, like, barely trying to react to what he's saying. So I just give him a little elbow nudge there. That mixes the cards in a more thorough way. And this is a shuffle that is preferred by children and... Now this, so I, I dropped that, I had nothing, I just left one card on the table. But again, Teller is watching every little detail. This is the moment that they're screwed, okay? This is the moment where suddenly things don't make sense. I want you to go ahead, turn them over, mix And you can see in the smiles in Teller's faces. You feel pretty good about that? And what they're looking for is they go to pick up the cards and they're looking, they're turning over those cards, looking for any special gimmick cards. So it's not just a shuffle, but that's why he says it's starting to make them feel worse and worse. Because you realize that what they thought I was doing is not what I'm doing. <laughs> that's why Teller gets so giddy and excited right there. That... At that point in time is when I felt positive. For the first time, I was like, oh, this is going okay. I had written practice that joke for a long time, timing it. I know, it's your choice. It's absolutely your choice. Face up. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I got it. <laughs> Truthfully, it doesn't matter. What so right now, again, I, know it, I did not know how they're gonna they're react, what they're gonna do. So this is like having to look at Teller and having them react, take the cards. I'm just trying to react to them. 
and then he picks the three of clubs, which is their uh, the card in all of history. That's their card. So right away, I'm like disappointed because people are going to think that I forced the three of clubs on them, but but I did not do that. He just happened to see it and he took it. So so there that was. So yeah, I'm just trying to react and go along with it. And now I'm turning around, putting it back in. Some cards are face up, some cards are face down. Look, I'm not even going to touch them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I let them sit there, they start to move all on their own. They start to turn over. So now every card is facing the right way. Every card. All right, so let me pause this for a second. A couple, couple things maybe I should tell you about it, this case. Um, one of them is that right now I'm setting up the idea of the trick and what's about to happen, that every card is the right way. And that's something I didn't start doing until months of, of a few months beforehand. I started really finessing the trick. And whereas normally I would just spread the cards out and say, now all the cards are the right way. I found that there's an, a dramatic impact in build-up when you tell them what's about to happen. That every card is the right way before you show it to them. So there's a lot of psychology in that. So that's really a whole other deep topic that I can talk about. The other point is the move. That everybody who comments on this video always like, oh, I watched this in quarter slow motion and I figured out there's the move. Well, just so you know, without giving too much away, that, that one move is, is a tiny fraction of the effect. That is not how the trick is done. If you don't know anything about magic, you're going to assume, oh, I saw something there. But I promise you, that's very tiny, tiny part of the trick. Uh, yes, the camera cut to the front, so when you watch it from the front, you see me do some kind of thing with the cards. But the key is that the show is not called Fool the Person Watching This at Home at Quarter Speed on YouTube. The trick is called Fool Pen and Teller. The show's called Fool Pen and Teller. So the key is that Penn and Teller are sitting right next to me. They're sitting in high chairs. I, I get to select as the performer. I selected the chairs, the table, everything. So they are higher than me for a reason. They're at that perfect angle for a reason because I wanted people to see their faces, but I also wanted them to be looking down at the deck. And so the angle that the camera is capturing the, the move pass, yeah, of course it doesn't look great online, but the whole point and the only thing that mattered is their eyesight. And when I do the move, there is nothing for them to see because of the angle that they are. So that's just a little extra background information for you. And because people are like, oh, I saw that, I figured it out. And it's just a goofy thing to say. But again, if you don't know magic, I understand that assumption. But at this moment in time, I am now done. I am relieved and I'm just building up the effect. It's now face up, except for one, except for two. The only and it's like, and what is he doing? And I. The directors told me, when you're done, you take the two cards, you look straight ahead and make sure you pause and you show the cards. So I'm just like relieved. And in my peripheral version, I'm seeing Penn go crazy and pick up the chair. Teller's just sitting there. I don't know what to think at this point. It's a lot going on all at once. So now, Teller is, is grabbing the cards and I'm like, good, yes, yes, I want you to be bothered by this. And then Penn is just going crazy. Um, I don't know how I feel. I feel really good at this point. And now I'm going to focus back in and talk to Jonathan. That's also the producers told me, once the trick is done, you know, don't try to listen to Penn and Teller talk about you, but instead, focus in. Now, right now, you see that move right there, what Teller's doing? I see that in my peripheral vision. He is feeling the edges of the cards, and that's when I'm like, I got him. He thinks this is a stripper deck. He thinks this is a special deck card. I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. Now, Jonathan's asking me questions, and, and, and I have a whole lot of things I can tell you about these questions as well. Maybe I'll save that for a separate time. But, again, I am right there. There's the move. He's turning the cards around, because that's what you do with a deck of cards that you buy in any magic shop. And that's how this trick can be done. That's one of the many ways it can be done. But as he's doing this, I'm talking to Jonathan, I see that in my peripheral vision, and I'm like, yes, yes. I hate you. And I did, I really felt it, because I knew he was saying that artistically, like, I hate you because you did a trick, I know. I hated that I knew the punchline when you started. I hated that it was clean all the way Yep, and this makes perfect sense to me. As a magician, again, this trick is a very old trick. There's dozens of ways of doing it, and he should have known it. Um, but I, I have a method that only magicians and kind of the underground of magic knew for many, many years. So I know as he's doing this, I'm blown away. But I know, I know he's like, you don't feel any love, but it's... It is positive. It's an artistic, playful hate. And yes, you did, but who cares? And that's like my my breath of relief. I am I am like, thank you. All right, sweet, I got it. And then this crap starts, and my heart sinks. I am 
At this point, I, I literally like, it's as bad as you can imagine I'm feeling. And I'm like, no, you are not doing this to me. Right now, you can see, I, I, I'm like, I swallow, I calm down, I'm holding my hands. I'm like, where is he going with this? Now, at this point, he's yelling at me, but you, you'll see a moment. I'm looking at Teller. Teller's looking at Penn, and Penn's yelling at me. At this point, I, you, literally, you can tell my body, everything. I'm just like, don't say anything. Yeah, so at this point, now I turn to Teller, and I'm trying to read him, and I'm like, I can't believe you're doing this to me. You're, you're about to take this away from me, all this joy that I had. <laughs> and then comes the moment of relief. I was just trying to get a read on Teller. I'm looking at him. He's looking at Penn. Penn's yelling at me. I'm like, are you really doing this to me? I cannot believe you. I'm about to hate you for the rest of my life. Oh, my God. And then there's that motor relief. And then he threw cards in my face. He literally hit me in the eye. Could not believe that crap. <laughs> but at that point, there's the handshake. There's the genuine love. Uh, it was awesome. Whew, wow. I tell you what. I just, I remember that, that moment so well. I remember walking off the stage. And when you walk off the stage, you have the trophy. You know, you smile at the cameras, wave it, and then you get off stage, and you hand the, a person off stage the trophy. I just collapsed. I literally just like fell down because of pure excitement and and unbelievable energy. And I just couldn't believe what had happened. And I remember that moment of smiling energy. Yes, you're on camera, on camera, you're off camera. <sighs> I just like nearly fell. It was a wave of relief. Um, what's really cool about the production staff there is that they're really all cheering for you. Um, they want you to fool Penn & Teller. So they have a whole production team that is on your side. They'd love it when that happens so that when I walk down into the hallway and then I get to see the production crew who are watching the recording in the hallways and different um, rooms of the Rio Theater there, those are the employees of Fool Us and they all clap and cheer and applause and hugs and everything. They're just, they were so happy for me. Um, and then I saw Michael Close, who's the magic one of the magic consultants on the show. He gave me a big hug, congratulated me on it. I did not get to see Penn and Teller at that moment in time because they were continuing to film other shows. But then Michael told me later on that Penn came out still like, how, how the hell that happened? What happened? And he explained to him and, and he loved it. He really appreciated the work that goes into the, this trick in particular. So I, I hope that this gives you some of my emotions and some of my ideas how I felt. I, I can't tell you how happy it is to hear people who have watched this 5, 10, 20 times and have told me about it. You know, it's certainly Penn's reaction that made this video go so viral and be so popular. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to them for this opportunity. And thanks to you for watching as well.